All right, so the difference between the ballot or the bullet and I have a dream, you have two iconic figures in civil rights, the civil rights movement, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. Who noticed a difference in delivery? Gia, please go ahead. Um, in the I have a dream speech, the way he said it was very like inspirational and like motivational to whoever was listening to it. And like every time he said like I have a dream, it was really like powerful. And the second speech, he was like, it was kind of like the book we were reading. It's like he's saying important things, but he's putting it in a way that's like easier for people to like listen to easily, and it's not as heavy. Okay, interesting, very cool. Uh, Alastrin, hook me up. You had your hand up also. Um, yeah, kind of like that, like the Martin, Martin Luther King one. It was, you know, um, I found it more like optimistic and like inspiring. But then the other one, like it was still good. It was just more like, like kind of a little more pessimistic as in like the bad stuff that's like happened. Um, and it also seems to be like very like bold and like very like upfront or whatever. But the other one, yeah, it was more like inspiring and stuff. Great observations, both of you. I love all of this participation. I've got Steph. Steph, go ahead. Um, yeah, so like the first one was like the Gia and Elastian said it was more inspirational. The second one was more like he was saying the truth of the matter and what was actually happening. He wasn't blocking anything out. He was saying it boldly and he was stating it as a fact. Yeah, and great observation there too, like the word fact. So the speech as a whole is a lot longer than we had time for. I kind of picked an excerpt that sort of proved a point. However, um, the, the speech, he's actually um, gets really into religion at one point. So I kind of like left that one aside. But at the beginning of the speech, he talks a lot about religion and sort of like places a lot of fact in there, too. Uh, so great observation, Steph. Uh, I'm going to go Oliver, then Rayon, and then Steve. Oliver? Um, I feel like the first one is more like it would be nice if we lived in a society where like it's like this. And the second one's more like, well, here's the problem with the current society. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. An, an incredible observation there too. Like one is more utopic. One is more, this is the society we would really want, right? That's Martin Luther King. I have a dream. And um, Malcolm X is, is like laying the straight truth and saying, yo, we got to fix this. Um, and, and he's basically saying, when we're saying the ballot, he's talking about votes, right? Like th it was a, a year for an election. And he's basically saying we want change, so we have to affect change by the ballot. Otherwise, we're going to be fighting, so on and so forth. Rayon, go ahead. Um, so for the Martin Luther King um, speech, it was really like um, inspirational and like like um, motivational for like the people who are listening to it, and like it is and it it it, it, it inspired them for change. And like um, Malcolm X, uh, speech his speech was like really like straightforward and like how um, like he was just stating all the things like that are happened like that are unfair like and like that um, that like they need change in their. Yeah, here's my question though, um, and I don't care either way. Who was moved more by which speech? Which which speech spoke more to you, to your personal interests in life or your style? Um, because I don't think there's a wrong answer. Both of these uh, people moved populations in their own respective way. Gia, which one are you more inclined to listen to? Um, the I have a dream one because just like we were looking at yesterday, like the things that we couldn't do right now, we still want to do them. So they're like goals and dreams. So you're you're looking forward as opposed to um, Malcolm X is is less looking forward and he's more in the present, saying, you know, like to get to the future, we have to deal with right now with all of these entrenched issues. Um, 
in saying that, uh, so yeah, I think there's no right or wrong answer there because uh, again, everyone was being moved in this political movement. Each speech has um, iconic quotes, if you will. Um, who wrote down or who took notice in either speech or both speeches, things that caught your attention? Who, who wrote something down or who noticed something about either speech? What were like uh, words or sentences or quotes, Rayon? Um, for the, I have a dream one where he said, um, he, he wishes like his four children don't live in a nation where they will be, um, he will not be judged by the color of their um, skin, but the content of their character. That is honestly one of my favorite quotes in all, of all time in terms of, um, from a teaching perspective is, is that, you know, again, I don't really, you could pass or fail, but if you've submitted everything and tried your very best, that shows and demonstrates your content of character. Okay, if you haven't submitted everything, then that's also showing whether or not you have the drive to be successful. You could literally not be successful, and in, in my eyes, you're still being successful because you are growing, you're learning. So content of character is one of the most iconic things there. I love that great pickup, Rayon. Alastrin, then Makai, then Yuna. Um, one from Malcolm X that I saw was, um, anything can sit, you and I have been sitting long enough and it's time for us to start doing some standing. Okay, so he's referring to Martin Luther King because they were doing sit-in, sit-ins, and they were very peaceful. Okay, sitting is a very peaceful act, correct? It, it's not aggressive, you're not even moving. Great observation there, too. That's the difference in the two I, philosophies. One is more aggressive. We're walking, we're standing, we're marching, we're being... Um, enough is enough and we're going to be moving forward. The other one is, is more peaceful. Um, again, I'm not suggesting one's right or, or wrong. I'm saying that they both were kind of going on at the same time. Awesome observation, Alastrin. Mr. Cole... Um, I've got another one from Malcolm X. Love There's it. There's one where he said, um, being a second class citizen is just being a 20th century slave. Isn't that an awesome quote? Yeah. Uh, here's my question. Which one are you more inclined to listen to? Which one do you like better? Um, I like the, the ballot or the bullet. Perfect. And, and that's good. Like, I'm really happy to hear that somebody, the the more aggressive one is totally cool. One is far more iconic. One is, but why is it more iconic? We've talked about this before. What is this white society, the white class? One is peaceful. So which one has this white society pushed? Oh, sorry. Uh, the I have a dream speech. Because we are controlling the dialogue. We control the narrative, correct? Like society, history has controlled this narrative. So they've pushed I have a dream because it's peaceful. It spreads hope. Whereas the ballot or the bullet is not as peaceful. Therefore, the narrative has been shifted towards Martin Luther King. Great observations, Makai, and thanks for having the courage for taking on that one as well. Awesome job, dude. Uh, Yuna. Um, one from the Martin Luther King speech. Yeah. Was uh, sweltering with the heat of injustice. Packed, hey? Like, that is jam-packed with, um, it's not very many words, but the sweltering heat of injustice it, it it literally it grips you if you will um and yeah awesome observations so many things there uh where are i like to like he starts talking in in the i have a dream he starts talking about all of these iconic places in the states uh and basically ringing freedom from the mountains in the rockies in colorado 
Uh, and he, so that I thought that was really interesting. He starts to pick on certain Southern states as well, like Alabama and Mississippi, which were iconic slaveholding states. Uh, and he makes specific reference to those on purpose. Um, but I do really like how uh, the ballot or the bullet, um, at the very beginning, if you went back to like the 310 mark, uh, he, he gets into the government and he has said something incredibly important. And he says, the government has failed us. And then he gets into it. And I get it. I, originally, I said about 3, 4, uh, 1340. So I don't know if any of you went back to the 1310 mark or 1309, I think it was. But he got into this point where he says, the government has failed us. And it's really interesting because we're currently in a situation. It doesn't seem to matter um, but we're in a political situation right now. We're in a pandemic and everyone is super hard on the government because health and safety is at risk. And so I thought that that was really current for today as well. Um, so overall, awesome job. The last thing that you kind of were asked to focus on was the pauses. What do you gain by sometimes not being over eager in your presentation? This is an incredible oral presentation skill to learn. Being able to pause, knowing when to pause. What did either or both individual gain, Alastrin? Um, I think the pauses help, like, let their words, like, sink in more and, like, let it be, you know, more deep and more, like, motivational or whatever. So, you know, yeah, like, it sinks in more. Incredible. Uh, yeah, incredible. Yes, totally, 100%. You let the words digest. What do they gain by those pauses? Rayon. Audience attention. You're gaining your audience attention. You're gaining, I'm looking for an M word. Um, and it means to basically move forward. But it's not movement, it's mo men. Moment. Momentum. Moment. Awesome. I've got Steve and Steph and Makai and Yuna. Are you all on the same track there, Yuna and Makai? Momentum? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Do you notice, especially in Martin Luther King's speech, he starts very slow and then he moves. He gets and his pauses become less and less frequent because he's already gripped and gained his presentation or his audience. And when he gets going, now he is fast and furious. A little reference to a movie, if you will appreciate that. But he has his pauses in the beginning. And he, <clears throat> when his audience is basically saying what? When he's pausing, what do they want? They want, they want, anyone? They're basically feeding, He want, they want more. The, 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 who felt <clears throat> motivated while they were listening to either speech. Because uh, Malcolm X does it too. He just does it differently. He talks faster, but there are specific pauses where he lets them applause. Does anybody pick? His, his pauses were not as drastic as Martin Luther King's, but they, they gripped his attention. They fed him power in his presentation, so his delivery became more emphatic. And those are skills to learn as a presenter um, and <clears throat> to be able to use. So again, from an oral communication skill, uh, those are things that you're gonna wanna learn is sometimes knowing your audience, understanding your audience, and understanding the power of a pause. And knowing that it's not always a bad thing to be able to break in your speech so that your audience, like, I forget who said it, was it Alastrin? You said, like, basically to say that it, it sinks in more. Is that what you said, correct, Alastrin? Yeah. I use the word digest, but um, sink in, perfect. So overall, I'm really grateful, really happy with what you have done. Here is my kind of goal. Does everybody know what a Venn diagram is? Tyler and Mackay, yeah, everyone should know what a Venn diagram is. Okay, you all know what they are. 
make a simple Venn diagram and compare the two speeches. We've talked about it. Make a Venn diagram and talk about the four points. OK, the way it was delivered. It's not overly complex. It's pretty simple, actually. And each circle is going to get its own title. Do it wherever you want. But compare those two because we, we can't read our book if you don't understand the context. So those two political figures you now have information about. How many before today actually had ever heard Malcolm X talk, talk or speak before? A few of you, OK? Mackay and Amira had, which is great. However, the majority of us had never heard of because, again, the narrative is set by our white culture, if you will. And so we're now having listened to that. Uh, tomorrow we'll just do a ton of reading. But today I want you to, to further digest and let those two speeches sink in. So you have 15 or 20 minutes because it's 955 to create a Venn diagram explaining specific speech or or uh, quotes and compare the two speeches. What do they have in common? So I'll share my screen with you and this is for those of you who don't remember what a Venn diagram is. I will do you a solid and I will give you an example. I'm not going to actually do it. I'm just going to show you how it would look. Uh, did I lose my pen? So am I sharing my screen or no? No, I'm not. OK, so you will have two circles, um, which isn't too overly complex. And apparently my marker isn't working uh, right now. Here we go. Erase this. Um, so I have a feeling that there's going to be more that separate. Uh, do you who would agree that there's a lot more in common that, than, than there are differences? Or do you feel that there's more differences than there are similarities? And that's how you're going to have to reflect this. So you're going to have two options. One, if you think that there is more in common than there is that separates them, you're going to basically want to have your middle to be as big as possible. OK, you're going to. But if you think that there is more separation then there is similarities you can have your middle to be a little bit smaller and then leave more space here are there any questions just compare the two speeches that's all you're having to do we've already talked about it it's not homework per se i just need them to be done you're not submitting them on edsby i just like on an assignment i'm just going to take hat like just like you did your the thing for integrated studies post it under the the um the thread that we just posted on language so take your two venn diagrams and post it there you have about 20 minutes everything should be self-explanatory uh, a great conversation thank you so much for that and i look forward to seeing some of your venn diagrams does anybody have any questions who has a dream no too soon all right Good luck, everyone.